gather up your garlic and wooden steaks because the world is full of real life vampires looking for a bloody meal. We're counting down the top 10 most extreme bloodsuckers in the animal kingdom and comparing them to human horrors like Dracula. Discover who's having the ultimate liquid lunch when bloodsucking is taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. A healthy human eats about a half a ton of food each year. We're omnivores that digest a wide range of plant and animal material to obtain the essential nutrients we need to grow. But no living human could survive for long if they drank nothing but blood. While blood is full of protein, it's low in sugar and saturated in salt and iron. That's why only a select few animals have found adaptations to survive on a blood buffet. Our countdown begins with part-time vampires before venturing into the horrifying world of those creatures that can only feed by going straight for the jugular. Our first bloodsuckers can fly just like Dracula. But these vampires aren't bats, but birds. These feathery fiends are found on the islands of the Galapagos. No seabird is safe from the vampire finches. While other finches feed on seeds or bugs, this bird pecks at the base of the masked booby's wing feathers. Once the skin is broken, it can sip on the blood that oozes out. Other vampires queue up behind the booby blood bank. The finches of the Galapagos were made famous by Charles Darwin as evidence for his theory of evolution. It's thought that the ancestor of these vampires wasn't after blood, but was pecking at parasites in the booby's feathers. It looks gruesome, but it doesn't appear to do any long-term harm to the boobies. That's because boobies, like humans, have a lot of blood to spare. Blood is our most precious liquid asset. It carries life-giving oxygen to all parts of our body, thanks to 25 trillion red blood cells flowing through more than 1,500 kilometers of blood vessels. The average-sized body contains about 5 liters of blood, which is pumped around the body thanks to the tireless activity of the heart. On a typical day, it will circulate more than 13,000 liters of blood. That means in a single year, your heart pumps enough blood to fill the fuel tanks of not one, but ten jumbo jets. Each day, our bodies produce over 200 billion red blood cells, which is why we can afford to give a little of our blood away. An estimated 8 million volunteers donate blood annually. 
which helps save over four and a half million lives each year. But it's not just humans that require blood transfusions. Meet Kayla, a four-year-old golden retriever. She's severely anemic because a mystery illness her body to attack her own red blood cells. Luckily, her owners have taken her to the Ryan Veterinary Hospital in Pennsylvania, where more than 28,000 animal patients are treated every year. Kayla is immediately given a blood transfusion. This will hopefully stabilize her condition while the vets try to discover the reason for her illness. The life-saving blood comes from the Penn Animal Blood Bank. It collects about 2,500 units of dog and cat blood a year. That's why staff take the blood mobile out three or four times a week to visit more than 1,000 donor dogs every year. Is Giella ready? Come on in. Donor dogs must weigh at least 20 kilograms, be in good health, have up-to-date vaccinations, and be willing to lie still for five minutes. If it wasn't for these donors, dogs like Kayla wouldn't stand a chance. It took 10 days and multiple blood transfusions to get her back on her feet and ready to return home. But back on the Galapagos, the vampire finch makes use of the masked booby as a mobile blood bank. The finch uses the blood as a dietary supplement to help it survive during long periods of drought. And that's why the vampire finch is only number 10 in the countdown. As a part-time bloodsucker, it's no match for the die-hard vampires that could drink Dracula under the table any day. The next contender in our countdown of extreme bloodsuckers puts a new twist on the story of the Beauty and the Beast. After all, what other animal is as beautiful and totally harmless as the butterfly? There are more than 28,000 different species of butterfly, and most of them delicately sip nectar from flowers using the coiled straw called a proboscis. But in Spain, there's one butterfly that holds a dark secret. The Madronio butterfly has a thirst for blood. This vampire butterfly is number nine in the countdown because in addition to sipping nectar from flowers, it drinks the blood of dead animals. This extraordinary behavior has only recently been discovered, so very little is understood about how this butterfly changed from sipping nectar to sucking up the fluids of dead and decaying bodies. This vampire is also unusual because its victims are already dead. Most vampires prefer to suck on the blood of the living especially the most famous vampire of all, Count Dracula. The vampire legend began in Eastern Europe, where blood-sucking creatures were once thought to be the souls of the dead that rose from the grave and wandered about the night to drink blood from the living. The vampire tradition survives today, the dark streets of New Orleans are home to a modern vampire, Tony Parker. I've been a vampire most of my life. I would actually say since I was about six. You're more or less born into it. It picks you. You don't pick to be one. I've bitten about five people. It was 
consensual. Usually we dated and either lived together or were just long-term partners. What people believe vampires are, the way they dress, the way they live, the way they are, the things that they do, it's completely out of the ordinary. And that is pretty much the way I live, actually. It's not what anybody would consider normal. Being a vampire means much more than just wearing a cape. It's a state of mind. Modern vampires seek to emulate Count Dracula's lifestyle of detached elegance. They embrace death as a fact of life and resist all social pressures to conform to normality. And of course, vampires are strictly nocturnal. Which is why Tony only works at night, offering personally guided tours of the city's rich vampire heritage. Good evening, folks. Welcome to New Orleans and to the vampire capital of the world. I am Tony and I will be your vampire for the evening. This way. The highlight of the tour would have to be the ending. Once we've finished and we've told everyone the stories and the facts and the history, the looks on their faces, some are shocked, some are amazed, some are appalled, and some of them are so intrigued that we know that they're going to be back. And those may be the ones that are what we are. They just don't know it yet. It's hard to know what it would take to become a vampire. After all, who would have believed that something as beautiful as a butterfly would develop a craving for blood? If only the other vampires in the countdown were as good looking. Our first two contenders have barely dipped their toes into the blood-sucking lifestyle. Because coming up is an animal that knows all too well that blood is thicker than water. And later, we'll discover a bloodsucker that's a real pain in the neck. That's coming up on The Most Extreme. In the waters of the Amazon, there lives a bloodsucker so terrifying that it could have come straight from a Hollywood horror movie. There's something strange in the water, something you can't see, something you can't feel, until it's too late. Forget about crocodiles, electric eels, or piranha. The nastiest thing in the waters of South America is little more than a couple of centimeters long. It's a tiny catfish called the Kandiru. It's number eight in the countdown because it doesn't suck blood. It bathes in it. It finds its victims by following a trail of nitrogen compounds washed out of the gills of larger fish. Then it waits for an opportunity to slip in beside the rich blood vessels hidden beneath the fish's gill cover. Using spines on its head, the Kandiru scrapes across the gills until they bleed. It only takes a few minutes to drink its fill. Then it wriggles out to sink to the bottom of the river to digest its meal. But what makes this vampire really scary is that the nitrogen excreted by fish gills is very similar to that found in human urine. This can confuse a Kandiru, leading to a painful case of mistaken identity. This fish was surgically removed from the inside of a human urinary tract 
It takes a delicate bit of doctoring to extract a fish lodged inside the most private parts of your body. But the Kandiru isn't the only creature to enjoy blood baths. The ancient Egyptians thought blood carried the essence of life, so bathing in blood was seen as the ideal pick-me-up. Roman gladiators regarded blood as the ultimate energy drink. They would gain strength by drinking the blood of their fallen opponents. Some people still drink blood today. In Africa, the Maasai don't drink the blood of humans. Instead, they get a good proportion of their nutrition from the blood of their cattle. These revered animals are carefully bled so that the cows come to no harm. The blood is often mixed with milk to produce a drink that the Maasai believe gives them great A bloody milkshake may not be to everyone's taste, but to the Maasai. Blood is just another renewable resource and a valuable supply of protein. Blood is also a valuable source of protein for the Kandiru. And that's why anyone needing to pee when swimming in the Amazon must always remember that there could be a bloodsucker lurking around their nether regions. So far, we've drunk like fish and met a bloody butterfly. But still to come, we'll discover the real reason that vampires have fangs. And what bloodsucker causes one of the biggest migrations on the planet? Find out next on The Most Extreme. Swooping in to number seven in the countdown is the infamous vampire bat. But you won't find these bloodsuckers in Transylvania. Real vampire bats are found in South and Central America. They prefer working with cows instead of Hollywood actresses. There may be much less screaming, but there are other unexpected health hazards. You can get buried in your work, literally. Vampire bats have unique heat-sensitive pits in their nose, which means that they can find where blood is closest to the surface. Then, they'll lick the skin and shave off an area of hair before removing a small plug of flesh with their sharp incisor teeth. So if real blood-sucking bats use their incisors for biting, why are human vampires always shown with enormously long canine teeth? Strangely enough, the answer has nothing to do with drinking blood. Humans, like vampire bats, would open a vein using their incisor teeth, which are sharp for cutting up food. Writers described vampires with large canine teeth because, as primates, were hardwired to be scared of fangs. An open-mouth fangy snarl is the classic sign of aggression for gorillas, chimps, and humans. So if you're in New York City and want a smile that would make Dracula proud, take a trip to Halloween Adventure and the Transformatorium. I haven't seen it. Here, customers can find everything they need to release the vampire within, according to Syrian Orion. They come in, they have an idea of what they, um, what they believe that their inner vampire looks like. And it was our job to get to know them, know their face, know their mouth structure, so we can create the perfect match for how they look. Something's not too long, not too short, something's very prominent, but not overbearing. You went in a mortal, came out a vampire.
Thanks to custom-made teeth, a little makeup, and designer contact lenses, this vampire is dressed to kill. It's time to meet kindred spirits congregating at a vampire nightclub. And the modern vampire is about mainly just living a lifestyle. Everybody knows that you don't live forever. You don't turn to a bat. You don't have to go, I need this unnatural craving for blood. Real bloodsuckers have a different way of having a good time. Real vampires don't suck blood. They lick it up with their tongues. A vampire bat can swallow up to five teaspoons of blood, which is a lot of fluid for an animal about the size of a mouse. Imagine if we had the specialized blood-sucking ability of the vampire bat. We'd be able to drink our own body weight in blood every day. If the average man was like a vampire bat, he'd be able to drink 180 cans of blood. But there's a problem with drinking that much liquid. The main constituent of blood is plasma, a clear fluid that takes up an awful lot of room in the stomach and provides little nutritional value. That's why having filled its stomach this extreme bloodsucker becomes an extreme urinator. It's the quickest way of getting rid of excess weight so that they can fly away. The vampire bat is number seven in the countdown because it has other adaptations for its bloody lifestyle. Compared to other bats, its stomach wall is thin and stretchy. It also has far more capillaries around the stomach to increase the absorption rate of the nutrients. These vampires will risk being pecked because they're always hungry. The bats can't go two nights without food or they'll starve to death. So while each individual drinks only a little blood, your average colony of 100 vampire bats would in one year drain all the blood out of 14,000 chickens and sometimes they feed in the most uncomfortable places but sometimes there are worse things than having a bat on your tail The next contender in our countdown of extreme bloodsuckers really has a nose for trouble. Flying in to number six in the countdown is the mosquito. Most of the time, male and female mosquitoes feed on sugars from plants. But when the female wants to breed, she needs blood. So every mosquito that's ever bitten you has been female. And she fancies some people more than others. Scientists have identified 340 chemicals secreted by our body that can attract mosquitoes. So if you think mosquitoes bite you more than others, it's probably because you smell a little different. The victim's blood pressure pumps her up like a bug balloon, thanks to some of the most complicated mouth parts in the countdown. The mosquito's proboscis is like a combination of Swiss Army knife, hypodermic needle, and vacuum cleaner. The mosquito's number six in the 
because it can drink about one and a half times its own weight in blood. It doesn't sound like much, but multiply that by billions of mosquitoes. Imagine being surrounded by a swarm of bloodthirsty females. Some people have recorded suffering 9,000 mosquito bites per minute. At that rate, you'd lose half the blood in your body in less than two hours. But some people pay to be bled for the good of their health. Finland is the home of the sauna. For thousands of years, people have used these steam baths to cleanse and heal the body. And in some places, you can still experience the safe, modern version of a very ancient practice. There was a time when doctors from Asia to Europe would treat everything from headaches to constipation by letting out a little blood. Today, doctors see bloodletting as somewhere between useless and lethal. But in some parts of the world, the tradition continues. And it's certainly more pleasant than being bled dry by a swarm of hungry mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are so annoying that they contribute to one of the greatest migrations on the planet. Caribou born in the Arctic summer are plagued by hordes of mosquitoes. So to shake off the attackers, hundreds of thousands of caribou bunch together because individuals are tormented less in a crowd. When the insect plague is at its worst, the caribou herds are constantly on the move and can travel up to 60 kilometers a day, further than at any other time of the year. Being mustered by mosquitoes may be annoying, but at least you can hear them coming to get you, unlike our next contender. If the last two pesky bloodsuckers have driven you a little batty, get ready for a horrible surprise as we open the door on the next slimy suckers. And later, we'll discover a bloodthirsty assassin that strikes in the night. That's coming up next on The Most Extreme. This is the Kazaranga National Park in Northeast India. Protecting this wildlife sanctuary is a dangerous job for the patrolling forest guards. Their constant attack from the animal crawling in to number five in the countdown, the leech. These little suckers are armed with an incredible array of senses. Their bodies are covered in light-sensitive cells, which makes them experts at detecting moving shadows and dropping onto anything below. If they don't score a direct hit, they'll follow you by lurching along your scent trail. They have a good incentive, since leeches can go for six months between meals. The warmth of the victim's body guides the final part of the leech's voyage. Leeches have three jaws and 300 teeth that effortlessly slice through your skin. The leech is number five in the countdown because it can swallow five times its body weight in blood. The leech's incredible thirst was recognized by medieval doctors. At their peak, 
It's been estimated that each year, leeches sucked from patients more than one and a half million liters of blood. And it came from the most unlikely parts of the anatomy, according to collector of medical antiquities, Dr. Doug Arbiter. Leeching was done on essentially any part of the body. And um, this is a 19th century leech applicator tube, actually a pair of them. These tubes have a hole in either end, and they were used to put um, in regions of the body that uh, were fairly difficult to get a leech to cling to uh, normally. For example, they were placed in the rectum, um, around the uh, cervix, uh, in the nostril, and uh, the leeches were then um, placed on the edge, and they would crawl right up and attach to where uh, you wanted the patient bled. Strangely enough, leeches are still sucking blood in hospitals today. Here at Tampa General Hospital, these medicinal leeches are going to be put to good use on patients recovering from microsurgery. Hi, Lynn. Hey, Dr. I brought the leech. It won't take very long, you won't feel a thing. Reconstructive surgeon Dr. Daniel Greenwald routinely uses leeches as part of post-operative care for his patients. Historically, the leeches were used to draw off the evil humors. The, the theory of health back in those days was that you had good humors and bad humors, and they tried to affect the balance of health, like if you had a bad fever, by drawing off your blood. That understanding of biology was incomplete at best, and that treatment was discarded because it obviously didn't do anything. Today, doctors make use of the leech's sucking abilities to get rid of excess blood and reduce the swelling that can occur after an operation. There we go. In the modern era, we use leeches to help with reconstructive surgery where more blood is coming in than can get out and that leads to what we call congestion. We need to get that blood out of there so it doesn't clot and it doesn't poison the tissue. Leeches offer us the perfect opportunity to do that. A hungry leech actually promotes healing. By reducing the congestion of pooled blood, it allows fresh, oxygenated blood to reach the wound until normal circulation is restored. I think this guy is done, Lynn. I'm going to pull him off, and then we'll have you hold some pressure with the guard. The nurse comes and puts a dressing on you, okay? Okay. Okay, you shouldn't feel a thing. While not everybody may like the idea of having a blood-sucking worm on their body, it's still a remarkably effective way of saving an appendage. Other animals have more to lose if they're attacked by a leech. In some ponds, medicinal leeches can literally suck the life out of a helpless frog. It's a terrible way to die, but there's much worse to come in the countdown. When the sun goes down in South America, an assassin goes to work. An assassin bug. This predatory insect sneaks up on its victims as they sleep in a Venezuelan chicken coop. It's an easy meal, except when you choose the only insomniac in the flock. That's why some assassins choose an easier target. Even in complete darkness, the bug can pinpoint where to bite because it's equipped with precision heat sensors. You feel nothing as it drives in its long proboscis because it's coated with an anesthetic. Anti-clotting chemicals keep the blood flowing as contractions of its abdomen suck fluid from your body. Lots of fluid. The assassin bug is number four in the countdown because it can drink more than six times its own body weight in blood. Yet the assassin bug isn't the only secretive bloodsucker in Latin America. 
Since the 1950s, there have been reports of a vampire-like creature that kills goats and chickens. Usually, there's no evidence of a struggle, just two or three puncture marks. The victims are drained of blood, but otherwise left intact. The mystery creature was called Chupacabra, which literally means goat sucker. The Chupacabra is now famous, joining other celebrities of the paranormal world like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. People are fascinated by the mysterious murders. And until there's a convincing explanation for the deaths of so many animals, there will always be believers in the Chupacabra. You may think the assassin bug is just too small and too secretive to be scary, but you might have a different opinion if you watched it spend 30 minutes drinking blood from your finger. Forget about awful assassins and lousy leeches. There are bloodsuckers coming up in the countdown that have come straight from your worst nightmares. How much you clean up the house, there's one animal that's just bursting to get under your skin. That's coming up next on The Most Extreme. Bedtime will just never be the same once you've met our next extreme bloodsucker. Crawling in to number three in the countdown is the bed bug. It can wait patiently in cracks and crevices for as long as 18 months until it's lured out by the irresistible smell of carbon dioxide on your breath. Their activity is usually timed to the sleeping cycle of humans, so they scurry about the bedsheets unnoticed in the dark hours of the early morning. An unfed bedbug is wafer thin, but once it's thrust its sharp proboscis into the skin, it takes little more than five minutes for the bloodsucker to become enormously engorged. Bed bugs are number three in the countdown because they can drink more than seven times their weight in blood. Your average human never dream of drinking that much fluid. It would be the equivalent of chugging back about 450 liters of blood. That's enough to fill seven kegs. If the thought of that much blood is enough to make you a little squeamish, then you'll really love the story of one of the earliest recorded blood transfusions. In Paris, back in 1667, doctors thought that a madman could be cured if he was infused with blood from a cow. It's a nice, gentle animal, and the theory was would be transferred in the blood. So they strapped down the cow and the madman and connected their veins. The patient immediately started passing black urine and suffered a seizure. But apart from that, he was fine. Similar experiments were being done all over Europe, including transfusions of things like milk and wine. The biggest problem was that when blood was transferred from human to human, half the patients died. Today, we know that the problem lay in the presence or absence of two proteins on the red blood cells that result in four distinct blood groups. Transfused blood of the wrong type 
and the patient's immune system thinks it's an invader and destroys the blood cells. That's why transfusions were just as likely to kill as cure. But the bed bug has no such worries because it will happily feed on any blood type, just like our next contender. So when you go to bed tonight, sleep tight and don't let the bed bugs bite. Does your home have an uninvited guest? Look closely down in the carpet fibers and you may find the larvae of our next contender. They won't suck your blood. They're perfectly happy feeding on lint, dead skin cells, and the dry droppings left behind by mom and dad. Eventually, it will spin a sticky cocoon that picks up dirt and debris to make a perfectly camouflaged bunker. It can lie here dormant for a year or more, waiting for a host to arrive. Then, vibrations on the floorboard signal that it's feeding time for the animal that's number two in the countdown. The flea has very limited eyesight. Instead, sense organs on its antenna detect movement and increased concentrations of carbon dioxide that signal that a host is nearby. Then, it's time to show why, relative to their body length, fleas are the best jumpers on the planet. A flea can jump 150 times its body length. That's like a human leaping over 200 meters. But the flea is number two in the countdown because its blood-sucking abilities are just as impressive. Its mouth is made up of two scalpel-like blades with four rows of teeth that stab the skin to release the flow of blood. And the flea keeps on biting long after its hunger is satisfied. It uses the excess blood to make tasty droppings for its larvae to live on in the carpet. And since the flea is feeding for its family, it can end up drinking 15 times its own weight in blood. No wonder we've looked for ways of getting the bloodthirsty flea out of our houses. And our best weapon is the vacuum cleaner. Vacuuming sucks up flea eggs and larvae so effectively that in Northern Europe, the human flea is now more commonly found in the nests of alternate hosts, like badgers and foxes, than in our houses. Unfortunately, there's no such simple solution to thwart our final terrifying bloodsucker. We've seen the nine contenders. They're the best of the best is a more extreme blood-sucking machine. It's number one, and it's coming up next on The Most Extreme. The animal at number one in our countdown of extreme bloodsuckers is one of the world's most annoying creatures. There are 850 species of these specialized vampires, and one of them lives in the Kalahari Desert. It's been waiting for four long years, buried in the sand under the shade of an acacia tree. It's just a matter of time until a large mammal uses the tree as a sunshade and that's when it launches its attack. Scuttling in to number one in the countdown is the tick. This tampan tick is an eight-legged relative of the spider, 
with an incredible lust for blood. Some species may only be a few millimeters long, but they will crawl more than 18 meters as they run down their host. Like all its kind, the tampan tick tracks us down by following a track of carbon dioxide, ammonia, and body heat. Ticks select the best place to feed by sensing heat from the blood vessels closest to the surface. Then they drink. The tick is the most extreme blood sucker in the countdown because it can drink 600 times its body weight in blood. Imagine if we could drink like a tick. We would need to swallow the contents of a swimming pool. That's more than 38,000 liters of blood. There is one man who came close to sucking up blood like a tick. Paul Montague set an unusual record in London back in 1999. He almost broke the Bank of England, the blood bank. The story begins when Paul was out on his bicycle. He stopped for a red light, but a truck in the same lane didn't. Paul was so badly crushed that he was losing a cupful of blood with every heartbeat. A human can only lose about two liters or 40% of the blood in the body before it shuts down. But luckily, help was at hand. Doctors kept Paul alive by pumping in blood. Lots of blood. By the time doctors managed to stop the bleeding, Paul had received more than 200 liters of blood. The story has a happy ending because Paul survived his ordeal and even married his nurse. Those bitten by ticks are usually not so lucky. Even the king of the beasts falls prey to the most extreme bloodsucker in the countdown. The lion's only chance against ticks is its tongue. Because if a tick finds a spot that can't be lit, it can latch on for several days. In addition to mouth parts that are like barbed hypodermic needles, some ticks have salivary glands that secrete a cement-like substance which literally glues the feeding tick in place. Only when its body has expanded to several hundred times its normal size will it dissolve the cement holding it in place and drop back to the ground to digest its extraordinary meal. And that's why, when it comes to sucking blood, the tick really is the most extreme. <laughs>